Um, on the red carpet, we didn't get to chat too much about your casting choices. So I want to start with that, okay. where you found these two folks and the whole casting process just as a whole, what you kind of went through. Oh, great. Um, that's a great question. I, uh, I've met Heather and, and Sandeep. It's Heather Pasternak and Sandeep Parikh. I met them through our cinematographer, Charles Pappert, who had done Key and Peele. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I didn't cast them immediately. I read other people as well. Um, but I, f I was really, it was really interesting. I read, um, because the piece is, is about misunderstanding people and, and people have two different points of view of the same situation, um, people really judge different actors. You know, I, I read a, a, you know, actresses with certain features and then people were like, it's all her fault, she's a tease. You know, I was like, she's giving the same delivery, you know. And then I read like bigger guys and they said, he's aggressive, it's his fault, you know. And as we talk more about it, and just the that wasn't my intention with the piece to blame anyone or anything so um, I was very lucky to have found Heather and Cindy because they knew each other before and they had a chemistry and um, so as soon as I read them together I was like that's our that's our cast you know it's fascinating that you got mixed signals in your kind of build up to the film <laughs> yeah. did gosh that's crazy um, how many of those kind of things you were you able to do where you checked other people out and um, I did it I, I was because I was I was very scared of sending the wrong message with this film. You know, it was it, my intention was always to show both sides and to open up discussion to communicate better between genders and and to ask questions and not make assumptions and things like that. Um, and because that was my intention, I was so scared of of accidentally doing something else. Um, I read a lot of people and and I tried a lot of things with like even costumes and what people are wearing. You know, how do we judge what someone's wearing? I mean, as much as we don't want to say that. And as much as that we'd love that not to happen, um, she was in a different pajama outfit. The first, you know, right the first, right when she got there, she had a different pajama outfit, and I was like, I think we need something else, you know, because um, it's it's just so interesting how we make these judgments, and we don't even mean to. And it, I, I, part of the point of this piece is to so hopefully get rid of them, you know, and, and talk more about them. You know, you, you said that your family's coming down. I'd mm -hmm. love to know how crazy is it going to be have them see the film. <laughs> no. That's got to be a whole different idea of yeah, audience. Yeah, for sure. Um, my a lot of most of my family has not seen it yet, so they'll see it today for the first time. And it has a curse word in it, so I, m some of my family doesn't like that, you know. But I told them I, I didn't write it; he improved it. So um, although I did make the buttons that have the F word on them, so that's my fault. But um, I I'm excited to see them. Uh, see them see it, you know, and see what their interpretation is. It's every single time I've gotten to show it to people, there's been an interesting discussion afterwards. Um, people talk about their own experiences. Uh, they, you know, and, and I think a lot of men who are confused feel like they're given a little bit of a voice in this. Um, it's, it definitely doesn't blame the man. It doesn't blame, I hopefully, hopefully we'll find out. I hope it doesn't blame the woman either. That was not my intention. But I do feel like um, nice guys who get mixed signals and are confused get to be heard a little bit and get to talk in an open environment afterwards and say like what am I supposed to do in this situation or or um, you know can can you see how I might be confused how can I do that better you know there was almost a genuine quality to Sandeep's performance <laughs> yeah. um, I'd love to know about when he threw that line in there mm -hmm. what did you feel as a filmmaker I mean that's obviously off script but mm -hmm. that must that captured I think the whole premise in just oh, that completely. one line because she said she says that the R word, mm -hmm. you know, she says, uh, she, that, that was improv as well, you know, she, it was improv in rehearsal, she says many face rape, and uh, which is, re really gets a laugh, and I think it's really funny, I wish I could have written that, you know, um, but she said a rehearsal, and I was like, I'm putting that in the script, you know, so, so I put that in the script, and then when he said that in the take that we used, uh, when she says, you basically like it was basically like a mini face rape he says fuck you know and and I think people feel that it's like wow you're taking it there you're really you're like that's that's a serious word you know and you don't throw that around the R word you know so um, I really yeah I, I, I as soon as he said it I, I was I thought it was authentic and I thought it needed to stay in the film so. of all the shorts here at the festival I think timely wise this might be the most perfectly timed one just because of not only the Me Too movement but just the way women are looked at in the film world. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a bit about how crazy it is? Kind of, you can extend this out just because of that, I think. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you mean extend it out, uh, the fe maybe into a feature or something? Yeah, yeah. I thought about that. I mean, and I'd love to work with them again. It was, we, we really hit a groove shooting the short, and, a, and we talked about, the, you know, we didn't want to say goodbye after the short. And they're like, look, let's do a feature. Um, and 
I do think it's really timely. I, I, I had an experience like this happen in March or so, and instead of just blaming or anything, I, I really thought, wow, how did he... I thought I was being so clear. How did he get this? And some of the dialogue that that person was saying to me, you know, some of the, the statements he was saying to me that showed his point of view, I thought, oh, I see how you, I see how this is confusing. And it started to make me look at myself, like, how can I be more clear? Like, wow. we think we're being clear, but sometimes it's not. It's not as clear, you know. And I tried to put those things into the piece. And I even invited him to the um, screening, you know. I said that we had one in L.A. right before here. And, and uh, he said he thought it was fair and he really liked it. And... and um, but speaking of timely, I, I thought if I'm going through this, you know, of course we have Me Too and we have all these really important, a uh, lot of really important gender topics going on right now, you know, that, that are serious, you know, and this, this felt like um, a way to get a little bit of relief and a little sugar, uh, sugar with the medicine, you know, and instead of blaming anyone, just talk about it, you know, just, just um, say, how can we see each other's points of view? I mean, not, not, you know, this is an attempted kiss. It's not, you know, nobody's assaulting anyone really here in this piece and the stakes are so the comedy kind of comes because the stakes are so high because they're so low you know and that's why it's okay to laugh you know in this situation but but um i i thought i want to hurry and get this out there you know i want to i want to hurry and make it and I, even though i'm scared i was scared making it um i was like i think that means i need to make it you know so and after after watching in the edit too i would ba try to balance things i'd be like you know, one take, you'd blame her. And I have to do something different, then you blame him. And I was like, wait, how do I get this at the end so that the mixed signals are the bad guy? You know, and, and that, um, you know, it, it's, I just really didn't want anyone walking away saying um, men are bad or women are bad because that wasn't my point. So, What does it mean to be able to bring it home to Texas? In particular, Justina, I think, created something really special in Women in Texas so Film special. Festival. What does that mean to you to... Texas, but also women-centric. Um, so many things. I'm so grateful to be here. Um, some, I started here. I went. I was born in Houston. I went to the University of Texas. I interned for Richard Linklater in college, and I started writing all my stories set in Texas. You know, uh, features, shorts, music, uh, even music videos, actually, and. Uh, so many things and I wanted to get back I had to leave because I, I wasn't quite getting enough work here at the time but I left I may have left but my heart was still here you know and I have always had one foot here and to come back and screen here is kind of something I've been wanting to do very very badly and I, I want to shoot here more and um, it, you know we're usually as female filmmakers we're, we're often a minority at the film festivals and I didn't even realize until this festival what that felt like I just thought that's just the way it is like you know, I, I didn't even know, I didn't have anything to compare it to. Mm. And um, here I feel like I belong in a weird way that I think, I was telling John, that I think I can take it to the other festivals. Like once you've had a sense of belonging, maybe you can go to a festival that's for men and women, you know, and you can say like, I do belong, I am a filmmaker, but there's this subconscious kind of, almost like, um, something telling you that you don't belong when you're always a minority you know and and for this this festival gives you uh, a, just a place of belonging and, and 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 what I loved we had a round table the filmmaker round table yesterday and it, I've never had it like that it was just a bunch of filmmakers mostly women but not all women um, sharing their experiences and I thought gosh we're not competing you know some of these other festivals feel like feels like we're competing but here it felt like Hey, I had this experience happen. How how did you handle that? Or, you know, I have insight from X, Y, or Z from raising money. You know, let's let's share. Like, if it felt very collaborative and like a hive mind. You know, that really worked. So, I've, I love asking people who are out in LA. Um, there's so many Texans out there. <laughs> have you had that experience of running into fellow Texans and? I seek them out. Yeah. <laughs> that's got to be comforting, though. Yeah. It's it's almost like. The biggest majority in LA is Texas. Mm -hmm. It's kind of wild. It feels like it. Um, I think uh, you're, when you move out to LA, it's so different. It's weird. Like in Texas, people, um, you know, put your turn signal on and people slow down and let you over. You know, and that's <laughs> the way it is. And uh, at least when I was here, and uh, in LA, people speed up to pass you. You know, it's just a bit, that's just one example of what the difference is. So you get out there, a Texan gets out to LA, and you're like, where? Why am I here? What? What am I doing here? This is not what I thought. You know. And um, finding Texans in LA has kind of helped me keep where I came from and the values that I have, you know, and um, the kind of stories I want to tell. And I try to keep in touch with everybody as much as possible and get back as much as possible. 
So stories that you want to tell. Um, what's next? Is you, you maybe mentioned mixed signals as a feature, mm-hmm. but what other projects are you working on? Um, I'm right now. We're casting a movie I wrote and will direct called One Small Step for Neil. And I, I set it in Graham in Possum Kingdom, Texas, but um, I might have to change that to another area of Texas. Space related in any no, way? No, no, sorry. Okay. He's born um, July 20th, 1969, which is the day Neil Armstrong were, was walking on the moon, but he's born into kind of an ill equipped little situation and, and uh, nobody's really paying attention and, and um, they're all watching Neil Armstrong walk on the moon. So they name him Neil Armstrong. Uh, but he's not, it's, you know, it's just a coincidence. They're, they're, they're much more engaged in that than his birth. That kind of sets his path. But basically, uh, Neil, Neil Armstrong, another Neil Armstrong, is uh, born without the ability to empathize. Wow. But he wants to. So that's the difference, is that he really wants to. And, and um, it's also a nurture nature thing. It's like, was he, is it his brain, or is it just that he didn't have any role model? You know, there's a lot going on in the film. But um, so he, he gets diagnosed with the inability to empathize and uh, sets out to di- prove his diagnosis wrong by teaching himself how to understand other people in a small Texas town in the 80s and 90s. And you want to shoot in Possum Kingdom, right? Um, well, I've said it there originally, but now I'm, I'm scouting Waxahachie on Monday, yeah. which is amazing. I'm, I'm, I um, talked to Janice Berklin, and I, they gave me a book for Dallas. And mm-hmm. just the support that I've had here, I would, I would love to shoot it here if it were possible. You know, so. Yeah, it kind of fits mm-hmm. the, the layout. And there's also water there, which is yeah, important, yeah. too. Um, well, thank you, Tracy, for bringing thank the you. film. And thank you for, as far as the festival goes, you've kind of been one of the, the faces of it on TV. Oh, thank um, you. So thanks for spreading Women Texas Film Festival. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for getting our voices up.